Okay, I'm going to start. Um, welcome everybody. Thank you for coming back. Uh, it's, this is our last session, it's the closing session. And uh, we, are, we are very happy to see you. It's been a very long three days uh, when we've been all over the world and through all the topics. And it's, uh, it's been quite intense. And I'd really like to thank you for staying through these conversations and being part of them as much as your schedule permitted you. We greatly uh, appreciated your inputs. I'm just going to do my first slide that I do before each one. And um, I'm going to put myself in French and I'm going to, I'm going to um, inter uh, speak into the microphone because I'll be recording the French version while, I, while I'm participating. Okay, so you, I think by now you know how the system works. You know that the chat doesn't really work. We don't need the chat for the question and answer. We'd like you to raise your hand if you'd like the floor. There's interpretation in English and French. If you don't turn it on, you disactivate it. You'll hear what's the language of the person who's speaking, uh, no matter what language it is. It's, um, and uh, well, this is the last session, but the same code in principle and in, uh, in theory works for all the sessions, but sometimes the one code works for, uh, well, that's become a very complicated matter, but there's one code for each, for one, the whole workshop. Um, go on to the next thing. I'll come back again and uh, you'll, uh, you'll understand. Can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Again, I'd like to go back to the objectives because I think it's really important for us to look at these objectives and see how far we've come. We came into the workshop three days ago, what, you know, what seems like a li lifetime ago, but it was really only three days ago or two days ago. And it had two objectives. The first objective was to clarify the priority areas of action per working group. So this was to drill down to what can we start working on that's really important and that we can work together on based on the outputs of two previous consultations, the dynamic coalition launch and the survey. The second point that we wanted to look at, and this was done in each of the workshops, and it, it is transversal actually, was what are the parameters of an electronic tool that could be developed to support collaboration within public information about and basically activities of the dynamic coalition. So we've looked at these questions in each of the workshops and I think we've advanced quite a bit. We've had um, over 10 presentations by the working group chairs and we've had hundreds of interventions by you, the participants and you the participants you you represent the dynamic coalition you are a very diverse group and we're very fortunate that we had such a large uh, participation and the, this made the debate much richer um, it's particularly happy that it's uh, this group represented, of course, many at a very, uh, I think, equitable level. Like, haven't done the, yet. the participants came from all UNESCO regions, and I think the fact that we had a discussion in the morning and the afternoon, we brought together different groups from different time zones too, and our discussion was truly global. I recognize there were technical challenges. Uh, we had them as we had, everybody had them as far as I can tell. Um, and we'd like to thank uh, all the participants who experienced experience these challenges for their patience. We have tried to fix everything as quickly as we can and we have signaled it to our, um, to our technical people and we hope that this will be, uh, the big problems will be solved next time we do such an event. But we have tried our best to overcome these, uh, these, uh, these uh, difficulties. Of course, this has been a long way forward since we, uh, since, we, um, since we started this discussion on the 2nd of March, 
I think some of you remember we started the uh, discussion on a technical platform that didn't exist at all. So this is quite a leap forward. The format of this discussion, however, suggests it's more inclusive than it would have been under circumstances where we would have been face to face. Had we been face to face, we would have limited the participation and voices to, to those that could travel. It comes down to visa issues, passport issues, costs, personal circumstances, and it wouldn't have been open to all in spite of our best efforts because of these restrictions that I've mentioned. And this would have been unacceptable actually because the voices of all our participants are very, very important and it's important that we are able to uh, have a forum in which we can really exchange globally. Um, we have, uh, as you can see, the slide that's up there, I don't know if you, anyone's done the math, but all of this, the UNESCO rec OER recommendation was adopted eight months ago in November at the three month point, which is a very critical point in most uh, gestation projects. We had the launch of the Dynamic Coalition, and it was also the beginning of the COVID crisis and the pandemic uh, globally. It was, I think, just the global pandemic was declared a couple of, about a week before our meeting was scheduled. And we kept going and we held it. And I think it gave us a momentum to focus on the work. And we were able to come up with a report that was very comprehensive on what are the areas that can be addressed by a group, an international coalition to support UNESCO member states in the implementation of this recommendation. In July, at the beginning of this month, for 10 days, we had an online survey. And the survey asked you to look again at the conclusions and to give your opinion on what would be the areas that we should focus on to start with. And during this time, so we're now at the eight month period. At, at the end of the seventh month, beginning of the eighth month, basically, if you like, the third trimester. And the, um, the survey was uh, done. It was uh, during the holiday period. We had about 30 inputs. We had over 100 participants in Dynamic Coalition launch. It went on for a month. We had some 30 inputs. We haven't done the math yet for the online consultation because we have to sort through the um, the list of participants and also to deal with the fact that many people have uh, have the same name so we have screenshots of the participants and we also have the links so we have to make some sort of detective work to understand who was actually here but we have had at least 30 to 40 people this one we have 18 but the normal amount we had about 30 people in each of the discussions and they were different people and uh, during this time, uh, over the um, five, six sessions that we've had, we, um, we went through and we drilled down further on the two points that I mentioned. So we're at the end of the eighth month now. And we, going forward, and the next steps will be to launch activities from September, taking into account the inputs from the consultation. And we will keep you posted on that after in the coming months. Now, can I go to the next slide, please? There is an evaluation form for this. I'll send this through to, through the link here to you um, for the evaluation. Uh, there is a Google form. We'd like to have your feedback on this by Monday, uh, Monday, uh, actually by Sunday if possible, so that we can have, uh, we can incorporate it into the report. Um, I will send this out by email. And to the list that I've been sending information out about it every week since this, uh, this consultation started. If by chance you have not received messages about the following day ever since this started, could you please send a message to either me? Could you please change this slide? We'll go to the next slide there. If you don't receive my emails and you haven't received any emails from me, could you kindly 
uh, send a message. Uh, I can't um, I can't change the slide now, but you can perhaps also send a message to Neil to say that you have not received messages and I will get it. Um, the videos of the consultations are available at uh, oh yeah, at the address on the screen on this slide, which was also sent last night to you by email. And this OER Africa has kindly agreed to put the videos of the different sessions online so that you can listen to them if you are unable to participate for whatever reason and or if you want to hear it one more time. They will have a draft report that's circulated for comments by the, between the 3rd and 5th of August and a final report by the 7th of August. We'd like you to send your inputs by night 27 July which is uh, no we'd like you to see yes that's right we'd like you to send your comments to the uh, to the videos that you may have by Monday night basically midnight uh, CET and if you could send it to Neil at the address there and put in the subject of your message the working group to which your comments pertain and so with that, I give you the last steps and I'd like to give the floor to our ch transversal chairs. So to first to Micha, I'm sorry, first to Gasper, who represents the National Commissions. And so I give the floor to you, Gasper. Thank you, Zainab. <clears throat> Thank you, Zainab. Uh, I hope that you can hear me, Mr. Is it? Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much for your for your words and and this uh, opening of the opening of the closing uh, uh, plenary. Uh, however, um, myself, uh, I was not able to 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 follow the the consultations uh, throughout the week. But as I have understood, I'm also in my personal capacity. Very happy because of the because of the uh, rich participation from all regions in the world and 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 from different uh, stakeholder groups, and <clears throat> I wanted to just from the point of view uh, uh, from a uh, from from my position uh, in the in the working uh, group um, on yeah, it's called national commissions for UNESCO, but I wanted to stress to all of you um, a, a little issue because uh, I think for my, in my view, it's, it's of utmost importance that we keep in mind what the purpose and the framework of this dynamic coalition is. I mean, uh, from the first point of view is, uh, I mean, the recommendation was adopted by an intergovernmental organization by UNESCO. <clears throat> so it was adopted by UNESCO member states. This is governments. Uh, of course, as you, most of you were involved in the, in the overall four year uh, process and consultation process uh, for the preparation of the, of the recommendation. And uh, we have seen how it did work and how UNESCO itself opened up its, uh, uh, its way of work. Uh, in order to include, in order to include all parts of st stakeholders from all fields of interest, so from governments to institutions, from uh, uh, single experts, etc. And as we know, the objective, the objective of of the uh, recommendation, and then of course of the dynamic coalition, is. Um, to somehow support governments because the recommendation itself, it addresses governments uh, and to support governments to implement because it's on the side of the governments to implement the uh, recommendation itself. And uh, this, is, this is very important to stress. So uh, we have here uh, partners in this uh, dynamic coalition that are at, at the same level. So it's from governments to institutions to single experts. 
and to chairs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think it's important to 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 tell to to, to say that, and uh, so that we can see uh, uh, that this is a. I mean, the coalition itself is a um, somehow I don't know uh, a partnership among uh, 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 partners which are at the same level. So the dynamic coalition should not be, I don't know, uh, somehow uh, a service point for, I mean, governments or the other way around. But as, as I will try to, to, to present also during um, the work of my transversal working group on national commissions, because national commissions for UNESCO are in a uh, very pre uh, premier position in order to connect and to contact uh, the respective ministries which are responsible in the respective countries and member states for the implementation of UNESCO's programs and policies uh, in general, but of course also uh, 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 for the implementation of the, the OER recommendation. Um, so here I will try not to gather only those countries and national commissions who who are uh, who who proved to be the most active and interested uh, in, in 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 the implementation in the overall process but um uh, i will try also to promote this to to invite more more national commissions and more governments to be part uh, of 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 the of the dynamic coalition um I think that, that for this reason, uh, all activities that we do in the framework of the Dynamic Coalition um, need to somehow ensure that they foresee supporting governments as main stakeholders and at the same time as partners in the implementation process. I think this is important to stress and uh, so much from, from my point of view, I will try to stay uh, with you now until the end if, if, if we could probably still have a discussion on this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Gasper. Uh, with that, I'd like to give the floor to Mitya Yermo, who is the chair for AI and Emerging Technologies. Mitya, you have the floor. So thank you, Zainab. Um, hi, also. I was uh, listening here and there, not all the time, but I was present in some of the some of the sessions, and I've heard uh, some of the comments that that they were raised in uh, relation to to frontier technologies. It's not, of course, just AI when we say frontier technologies, but certainly uh, what I was uh, uh, listening to you was more or less uh, talking about the two issues, two important issues. So one is automatic translation, so where AI can fit in, and the other one was about the cybersecurity. So those are um, certainly two points where AI is um, making quite a large progress, uh, but it's not the only thing. So um, what I wanted to stress at the beginning is that um, if you look at the complete ecosystem of OER, um, it's not just about the translation, it's about a lot of things that um, AI can help on one side the creators and on the other side the users of OER. So, um, so let's say teachers and on the other side uh, students. So what I was, uh, what we are, we we are, uh, we we see, we think that one of the major problem is essentially the the this disparity of dispersion of different uh, OER across the globe. So there is no, there is no single point of entry right now that you could find. Uh, um, that you could get to to a large collection of everything what is going on in the globe on OER. This is number one, and number two, of course, there are not there are no tools available yet that this would be made simple. So uh, if you are the creator of a teacher of let's say the 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 applicant that we are having on the in the others program, which is Open Education for a Better World, we see. Is this is the issue, the issue of how to how to get proper content, how to get the proper 
services and how to use them then later on to prepare something which would be a valuable a valuable service. So uh, it's, um, I, I, you know, one of the most important thing actually is using AI to collect this information, to collect all this content, to collect OER and services across the globe, making them in, uh, present them in a structured way because as it is today you would need to spend quite a lot of time in order to find out the proper content now and of course this includes as well the automatic translation but this is just one point of of this processing of oer so it's important so ai is not just just about those two things that that there was discussion about so it's a little bit more and um, I, I think that um, um, putting uh, AI in in a in a in a service to support on one side the ones who are creating OER and on the other side to the ones who are using OER for learning, those are the two main things that AI can bring in. Now about the cybersecurity, cybersecurity is somehow. Um, inherent in the services already because you know if you 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 uh, if 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 there is a if you have a repository of uh, of any type of uh, let's say learning service and this repository is sits on the uh, well developed uh, well developed uh, um, uh, cloud service then then cy cybersecurity is somehow inherent in that of course, the other completely different issue is when you are dealing with something which would be a home main service and a home main application and and uh, alike. So, um, cybersecurity is a is a national issue as well. So, a uh, national issue would mean that uh, even the uh, uh, the most developed countries are not really uh, dealing well with the cybersecurity. So. The issue about using then the AI to solve this, the, to solve this, the, the problem of the, the cybersecurity is more about on the national level, which goes not only into the education but as well to the other uh, services which are supported on on the on the globe. So um, here, I, I, I think that uh, it is an issue. It is an important issue. I was answering on one of the questions at the at the uh, at the at the beginning, which was about the cybersecurity, saying that uh, if you look at the OER as itself, and uh, you don't, you, you just look at the content and services. So without learning analytics, without gathering information about the usage and the users, then the cybersecurity for OER goes into the level of, let's say, fake news or fake content, or, or the content which is not properly properly presented. Those are the things then that can fit into the several quality criteria that we are trying to uh, uh, develop in order to provide to a user at the end of the day quality content. So um, there are several levels, several aspects uh, of, of cybersecurity as well. But what I wanted to say is again, uh, the how to make the use, reuse, uh, creation of OER uh, simplified, easy to use. So in order, it's some kind of a, let's say, semi-automatic way of how to construct a learning course for a particular subject for a particular day in close to real time. Those are the things that, that AI can certainly help. I was telling you, I was showing you already the tools that are on disposal, just from the ones we are aware of, there are many others as well. So this is not something which is a research or development, it's something which is a commodity already. So it's just about uh, picking these things and putting that into practice to solve uh, one of several of the, of the issues which are very relevant now for the, for the uh, OER adoption. So this is then just briefly my observation. Thank you very much, Nietzsche. Could I now give the floor to Lexi? 
I think you have the whole PPT also. All right, Zainab, thank you very much. Okay, so I just have a few slides here um, and I'll speak fairly briefly about monitoring. Um, so I, I raised this in the opening plenary as well. We're still in the very early stages, um, as Zainab noted as well, in terms of the objectives of these sessions. We're really trying to drill down and identify um, priority activities. Um, so at this stage, there were a few points that did emerge that, um, although not explicitly related to monitoring, I think have implications moving forward. Um, so I will speak to those. Um, perfect. Um, yeah, so first of all, one of the things that I noted was discussions were beginning to look at these potential outputs. Um, as I mentioned in the opening plenary session around monitoring, uh, you know, it's really important moving forward that we think through the results chain of these activities. So what is the objective, the overall objective or the outcome? How do the activities and outputs lead towards that? Um, so that was really starting to emerge in some of these discussions, that linkage between the possible outputs as well as the higher level outcomes. Um, and while certain discussions did center around, center around specific outputs such as tools or policies or capacity building programs, um, I think there was also discussion that was beginning to emerge about how these outputs would lead to the mainstreaming of OER in a more sustainable way and the impact of this on key stakeholders. So that results chain, um, which is starting to emerge, I think will be very important as we move forward and begin to think through monitoring um, in a more specific way. Um, the second point that I think, again, not explicitly, but indirectly is linked to monitoring um, were the discussions around research. So in the opening plenary session, again, I mentioned, uh, you know, three of the essential purposes of monitoring. And the third was that it can inform research. So I participated in two out of the four uh, thematic working group sessions and in those sessions as well as in the videos and materials that I reviewed from the other two, um, they all touched on research. Uh, so research was framed in these discussions as being, you know, very essential for our advocacy efforts. Um, and in terms of creating demand for OER or demand for support for OER uh, by providing evidence for sustainability, cost effectiveness, um, impact on teaching and learning. Um, so in, in general, research was framed in that way in these discussions as being very important to the efforts going forward. Uh, the participants in the sessions, at least that I was involved in, uh, generated numerous ideas for research topics related to the themes. Um, so there was a lot of different ideas about some of these areas that we might need to delve into. Um, there was also some discussion about how previous research and monitoring had actually uh, influenced continuous improvement and led to implementation of further uh, recommendations and interventions. Um, so I think the, the linkage between these research topics that are starting to emerge and the output and outcome indicators that had been generated in earlier consultations was quite evident. So a lot of the topics that were uh, discussed in terms of research are, are really related to outcomes and impact. Um, what, it, what is the impact of OER? So I think moving forward, it will be really helpful to think of monitoring uh, activities in terms of action research. And this was raised actually in the working group for this idea of action research. Um, so that we're not just monitoring progress for a reporting function, but it's also you know, collecting this data that can inform more in-depth research that can be used for advocacy efforts moving forward. And then lastly, one of the um, topics I think common to the working group discussions, uh, which as Zenef noted is a transversal um, question and across those working groups, was on the requirements for a tool or platform for information sharing, um, which was, and collaboration, sorry, which was uh, mentioned earlier. So again, all of the groups touched on this and not directly related to monitoring, but it brought up some ideas of how uh, this tool could be used for that purpose as well. So, you know, we've noted that the, the main purpose would be to facilitate communication as well as foster collaboration. Um, but I think also this is going to be a very rich resource of data um, in terms of what is happening. Um, 
And it was also mentioned too that in a few of the working groups that this tool could really help to share good practice challenges. So it would provide um, really rich qualitative data as well in terms of uh, not just what's working, but also what's not working. And that feeds into that monitoring, evaluation and learning cycle. So how do we take the information about what we're doing um, and really use that to inform and improve um, our interventions. Um, so I think this is something to keep in mind as we, we begin to develop this tool in more concrete terms, um, just to think through how it could be leveraged or um, how we can draw information from it, not only just for communication and information sharing, but also um, as a, a source of, of data for tracking our progress. Uh, yeah, so I think those are my main observations about the, the implications of these um, recent discussions in terms of monitoring. Um, and I just want to say overall, it, it was a very engaging and productive uh, series of consultations, um, a really diverse group and a, a lot of interesting ideas and examples were shared. So um, it was a, you know, enjoyable experience and looking forward to continue working with everyone through this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alexi. Uh, we greatly appreciate your inputs um, and your, 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 your clarifications on how the important role that monitoring will have moving forward. And it's interesting that you bring up the point of action reach search, which, did, which is an interesting uh, point that came up in the discussions. Um, with that, I'd like to open the floor to any questions you may have or comments. Uh, we have some time, so please feel free. Um, there are no, so far there's nothing in the question answer box. Um, are there any points, any last uh, statements anybody would like to make? I'm looking for raised hands. I think maybe everyone's very tired after a very long week. Three days. It's only been three days. It's not a big week. Um, let's see. Question response. Okay. Good. Fine. Okay. Well, with that, I would like to invite you to please fill out the evaluation form and let us know how you what you found worked, what you think we could work on uh, to improve the next time. And uh, this is the first time that we have done a consultation of three days with six sessions in two languages uh, in multiple time zones. And we'd like to, this consultation, nothing would have been possible without the support of the entire advisory Everybody was mobilized and we worked very hard. And uh, thanks to everyone's efforts, we were able to pull this together. I'd like to particularly thank Neil for stepping in with OER Africa to support the, uh, the work uh, in a very intense manner. And greatly appreciate that um, you're able to use the videos quickly on OER Africa and the work that he and uh, Neil Mohini have done in participating in and really in, um, in moderating a number of the sessions, if not all almost. And uh, we, I think we have had a chance to have some very rich discussions, which I have not um, seen often in the past. I'd just like to mention one thing that I was thinking of recently when I was thinking about this week. I think some of you were there, but about 2009, I was working with the Commonwealth on a project that was called Taking OER Out of the OER Community. And basically, at the time, we were talking about what OER is, and we were going basically to do the world tour in which we spoke about it was with Sir John Daniel. And uh, we spoke about what OER is and what's happening and how it can be used in different communities in different contexts and it was the beginning of a discussion now we're more than 10 years past there's a recommendation there is a global community 
and there's a very active global community with a very diverse voice. And we're having this discussion today online with interpretation over the time zones, and we're able to move forward even more. So this would have been an unimaginable, maybe 10 years ago. So if this was unimaginable more than 10 years ago. I can't even imagine what is possible even with the development of the technology and the recognition that OER has had globally since that time. So this is a very important work that we're part of and that you're part of and you're living in your in your context. So I do really look forward to the um, to the to the follow up. It's just the beginning. We're only at the eight month. So it's the end of maybe the gestation period, but it's definitely the beginning of something very diverse and very exciting. I'd like to thank also Olivia, uh, who's our colleague in the, in the communication information sector. And of course, the interpreters who have had to deal with all our microphones, all our different microphones, our different problems with connection have really made it possible for us to be able to communicate at least in two languages. And that is a very big step forward from even three months ago where we were. I'd also like to thank very much uh, uh, Alex Tissier, who is the technician. You see him on the lists on the screen. A Tissier, he's, uh, he's been helping us trying to fix problems as it comes along. And we have in the background, we had uh, Alex, Alexandra Oakley and Valerie Chagnon, who were also putting in place everything and making it possible. There was a lot of hands behind the scene trying to make sure everything worked. And um, so there is, we, this would not have been possible. And uh, I have a, so this is, um, this is what's, uh, I, I want to make sure that uh, we can express our thanks to all these colleagues properly. And thank you very much. I have two comments here. I'm going to read them out now so we can really interpret it from Kate Green. Congratulations to the entire team. This global effort to help governments implement the UNESCO OER recommendation is a historic opportunity. Creative Commons stands ready and is eager to support these efforts. Thank you, Kate. That's great. And we look forward to working together with you and your colleagues. Thank you. Igor's comment are the working groups continue engaging in August once the final report has been circulated? How is it going to work? Well, it's going to work the way I did in my presentation. We will we'll send the final report to you. We're going to send you, we'll ask for your inputs by Monday afternoon, or Monday evening at midnight, which is the 27th of July, I believe, by email to you on the sessions have any and especially if you're going to go listen to them again or for the first time online. Uh, we'd also like to ask for your inputs to the evaluation by the deadline. We will circulate a draft report the next Monday, the 3rd of August, for inputs by the Wednesday, the 5th of August, and a final report will be available on the 7th of launch activities from September, taking into account the inputs from this consultation and we'll keep you posted on this. So uh, there's another, another, no. So um, thank you very much. And uh, what's this? Are the we going to, no, sorry. Okay, um, are there any comments or hands or anything? For the moment, for the month of August afterwards, I hope that everybody gets a break. I think July has been quite intense and uh, we don't know what September is going to bring in terms of everything else on the planet. So we do hope that people will get a chance to get a bit of a vacation in August. Are there any other comments? Uh, with that then, uh, would anyone else in the panel like to take the floor? 
I wanted to say, if I may, uh, Zainab, many, many thanks uh, to you and of course your team and, and everybody who supported you in this efforts uh, from my side and of course sincere thanks to everybody who attended and who is with us. That's all. Thank you, Gaspar. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, I think with that, we are go we're ready to end this long adventure that we've had over three, three days. And uh, we will be getting back in touch with you for the next steps. And uh, first of all, with the final report and then the launch of activities in September. And we'll continue to uh, post it as we develop further. Thank you very much. I'm wishing you a very pleasant weekend and a nice day or a nice afternoon, depending on where you are. Wait, there's more. Uh, there's a pre statement, for, uh, input from Fatima al Hosseini. Thank you all. Lisa Petridis, thank you, Zena, for all your efforts and seeing this work through during this time. Not that we had expected with COVID, but incredibly thoughtful and valuable. Uh, Igor says, thank you all. Stay safe and take care. I think that goes, that's a very important comment right now. I hope everyone does. And Rania says, thank you so much for this fruitful meeting. I'm glad to be part of the team, of the team participating. Achit Marcella Morales, thank you. Denman Watson, thank you all. Looking forward to our work together. We're also looking forward to our work with all of you, and we're wishing you also please to take very good care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe, and we look forward to continuing our collaboration together. Well, Warner Zainab, thank you. Apologies for access and convenience. As best wishes to all. Keep safe. Alejandro, uh, Mexico Secretary of Public Education, will share an analysis of the survey results. This would constitute an element for a roadmap within the ministries. I did actually send the results. It's, uh, I will resend the results of the survey. And um, they were sent the first evening, but I'll resend. Uh, thank you very much. I will close the session now. And I wish everyone a very nice evening and continue as you. A bientôt. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.